Okay, here we are, right? Okay. Okay, so last week we have uh, covered a little bit on the steady state error and we stopped shortly after this, okay, about the static error constant, okay, where we try to find some common terms, okay, which refer to the limits of GS or SGS, okay, depending on the type of uh, input that we intend to put in, okay. So, therefore, we have this so-called static error constant, okay, KP, KV, and KA, okay, to describe uh, the, the so-called steady state error, okay. When the value of the steady state error decrease, therefore this constant should increase because they are located at the denominator of the static error, right? Okay, so this constant is referring to the values at the denominator, right? So they have a inversely proportional uh, relationship, okay? Then shortly after that, we have this uh, examples, okay, where I request you to quickly go through it, right, as it's quite straightforward, okay, just having uh, transfer functions in this closed loop uh, transfer, yeah, closed loop transfer function system or closed loop system itself, okay, therefore, from here, we can identify what are the uh, static error constant, okay? And from the static error constant, basically, we can know uh, what are the suitable type of input, okay? That will not result to the unsteady uh, condition as well as uh, those who can produce so-called uh, zero zero error cons uh zero errors okay zero steady state error sorry okay so this is how it would looks like okay from this diagram as well as this okay as the the situation change okay therefore it also change accordingly right so this is for the parabolic input and so on Okay, then after that, we also quickly mention about what, what is the system type, okay? Because most of the time as we, we go through the static error constant, again, we realize that they are very depending on this, okay? This, uh, the power of this S, okay? Sn, okay? So therefore, we have categorized them according to the so-called system type. Okay, so the type referring to the, the power of this n. Okay, so if it is uh, zero, then we call that as a type zero and so on, right? And because of the type itself, therefore we should able to like predict, okay, what are the, the static error constant, whether they have a value or not, okay? So for type zero, for step input, okay, we have a constant value, the rest would be zero. Okay, for type 1, for RAM input, it would be a constant. The rest on on the, the higher order of input would be 0. But then the remaining, okay, the one, those input which were lower order will have an infinity, meaning to say they have a 0 steady state error. Okay, so when we get infinity, then it is referring to the steady state, 0 steady state error. Okay, 0 steady state error. Okay, so this one uh, you may have tried before. Okay, so basically very uh, similar. Okay, just identify the system type. Okay, but in this case, is there any system type? What is the system type for this? We already refer to the power of the S over here, right? But it's not. It's not display over here, meaning to say this is S0 because S0 give us one, right? Okay, so therefore this system type would be 
zero okay so system type would be zero okay and from there onwards you can start to do the the typical calculations based on the formula okay given okay for kp kv and ka okay which refer to the limits of gs okay then uh, limits of uh sgs okay and so on okay so you just calculate accordingly right and identify what are the requires uh, uh output okay that you you may need over here so today's uh we will continue from there okay where we have this so-called specifications okay so specification is basically a kind of a when we do a design we would have a desired output okay so that would become like our specifications okay so static error constant can be used to specify the steady state error characteristic okay therefore sometimes instead of uh instead of saying uh the steady state error we would specify in terms of the steady state error constant okay so this would be uh more making more sense okay when you start to search for electronic component okay you may start to search for electric component for example you may search search for uh maybe proximity sensors okay and so on then suddenly in the in the technical specifications okay of that sensor for example uh, proximity sensors okay that you that you intend to purchase from a website maybe yeah uh, electronic website okay so when you read it then you may realize sometimes they may write there uh kv equals to some value okay so based on that value itself okay so if kv equals to some value okay so if you look back to this diagram itself okay so if kv equals to some value meaning to say the kv is a constant okay so immediately from that particular uh technical specifications of that sensor itself you will know that if you provide a ram input they will give you a certain type of steady state error okay so for that kind of sensor it is maybe suitable for the step input okay not for others okay especially for the parabola input okay it will give you the the unsteady state error therefore when you select that kind of sensors immediately you know that if your signal itself is a parabolic uh in a parabolic form then whatever you you put in okay or you try to measure okay from that particular signal will give you some uncertainties okay because the system itself is not stable okay so this is how you start to relate them okay with some uh uh real life uh hardwares and so on okay so sometimes you may see this uh ka kp or kv okay come into the technical spec of sensors or maybe uh electronic device okay to show that how that uh device or sensors will respond to a signal okay for for sure we we always imagine that uh when we give a uh, a power okay or maybe a motor okay you have a dc motor or ac motor when you give a turn it turn on the power then the motor immediately perform at at a at a desired speed okay but in real life it's not okay the period of it to achieve the the so-called uh, desire speed okay the desire speed is referring to the steady state value okay and there is a period of time it can be in a microsecond millisecond okay or maybe for a big motor you have a big fan with which have a, a diameter of maybe one meter okay for example the turbine engine of uh of an aircraft okay which is big enough therefore the the aeroplane will never turn on and fly okay they have to come to a steady state rotations okay before they they can start to uh 
being able to be controlled okay and so on so there is a, a time where we call it as a maybe a ramp the peak time and so on this is where all this control come into a picture okay which uh, may not be useful okay when you when you're operating at the uh, at the normal conditions okay but this is the period of uh transient okay which we would want to uh control okay especially when we are designing for a system uh for example mechatronic system okay which they always switch positions okay for for turbine engine of an aircraft they may not always change the the speed okay not always change okay they may ram up ram out ram ram down and so on at the at a certain uh length of time okay but for electronic component okay mechatronic maybe you have your your nowadays uh you may not see much of the mechatronic parts anymore okay uh okay maybe a 3d printer okay which have which consists of a of a motor or maybe to control the lens positions okay so all this control will always change okay in millisecond okay because the the printing time is quite short okay especially when you are you are desiring for a fast response type of uh, printing therefore it keep changing positions and all this control of the transition part would be very very critical okay even with your home uh, color printer as well the motor uh, that move the cartridge okay the printing cartridge must have respond okay as fast as possible stop at the right time and so on okay so they they desire this kind of precise control of the of the transition part okay not necessarily uh during the steady state okay so this is where all this control during the transient may may become important right so here is uh examples of a control system where they may have a specification of like kv equals to 1000 okay so when they give you this uh, kv equals to 1000 basically they we can make some uh informations out of it okay that the system would be stable yes okay because they they have a kv okay then the system type would be type one okay because of the kv if you're referring back to the previous table as i show you okay type one uh kv will be a constant okay so given the kv is a constant therefore the type the system is a type one system okay then also we know that if we put a ram input there will be a finite uh steady state error right in you if you change or upgrade the order of the of the input system to a parabolic then for sure the system will show a uh, unsteady type of uh, steady state error okay then also we can conclude or get some informations out of this that the the steady state error would be given by one over kv okay so this one single constant itself will tells you a lot of the story right once you understand the idea or concept behind the derivations of this stat uh, static const uh, static error constant right <laughs> okay uh, so here is uh, some examples again so you may try to practice on this okay what is kp okay so just referring to this uh, uh, methods okay so you're just referring back to kp refer back to the table okay then you should able to uh, get all these uh, interpretations of that specification kp right okay so you may try this out on your own okay same thing for these uh, examples okay so now for these examples you have been given with uh, transfer functions okay then what we would like to do here is that to find the k value okay this k value okay such that there is a 10 percent error in the steady state okay so what would happen is that you should 
first thing first, okay, in order to have a 10% error, okay, the system type must match with the, the so-called uh, relevance input, okay, since this is type 1 and it produces a, a finite constant error, so therefore the type of input that you may want to put in would be a RAM input. Okay, so you will have a RAM input over here. Then from this onwards, okay, in order to find this K value, okay, so now you start to uh, put things uh, into the design, okay, because in design, you may want to specify the desired value of K, the constant itself, okay. So now, if you limit your design to a 10% error, so this is the task for you to find what is the suitable k, okay? So in order to get that one, 10% error represents 0 0.1, right? So 0 0.1 would be equals to your error when you input a RAM input, okay? It, the input type would be a RAM input. So you have 1 over kV equals to 0 0.1. Therefore, your kV would be 1 divided by 0 0.1, which is 10, right? So your KV should be equals to 10. And this 10 equals to your equations, okay, which relate with the transfer functions, okay? Therefore, from here, you can identify that the K should be 672, okay? After you, you do some rounding, lah, probably, right? But I guess this one doesn't need any rounding. Sometimes you may have point something, right? So you, you do some rounding over, over there. So so roughly you may get when you put the k value equals to 672, therefore you should get this value, okay, of 10% error. Okay. So let me ask you uh questions over here. Okay. So now uh you can see that this k value 672 will give you the error which is 0 0.1 right okay and in many designs we desire something less than that right not more than that okay so let's say if you would like to reduce further on this error how this k will change is it Decreasing or increasing? Anyone can make a guess? Increase, uh, doctor. Okay, great. Okay, because they always have a inversely proportional conditions, right? Okay, so you may try to put in, okay, increase this K value. Therefore, this K V will increase and accordingly this value will decrease okay so from this census okay the relationship of it okay therefore when you select a value let's say now if you intend to round this off okay k equals to maybe you calculate you get 72.1 okay normally we will round this like maybe uh 672 okay meaning to say you are re reducing it okay when you recalculate the error it will be more than 0 0.1 okay but it depends on whether you can accept this kind of error or not okay if you cannot tolerate this kind of error it must be 10 percent or less okay it must be if let's say okay therefore you may want to round this off to maybe 0.5 or maybe directly 6 seven three right or six seven five or six eight zero okay this is the idea of how you you select the proper rounding value for the k okay depending on the uh percent error all right so next would be on the steady state error of the disturbance okay so here uh as we have seen uh before this okay we may interject some kind of disturbance in between before the controller okay to the plant okay because this disturbance is something that you may not able to uh, predict okay for example you may have a, a frictions you may have a wind okay and other other environmental uh, effect okay that 
contribute to this disturbance okay therefore your controller should be able to like mitigate this disturbance as well okay so similar to the previous derivations in chapter two okay you may refer there uh, from from there again okay so you may see that uh, your transfer function output will consist of two part okay the first part okay which referring to the error okay and the second part which come from the disturbance okay which come from the disturbance itself all right so due to those uh two two parts of the output okay there is the part where come mainly from the feedback as well as the input uh being controlled by your controller e eg1 right okay okay over here and the the output due to the disturbance itself okay so here you can see that the after we rearrange and re yeah rearrange the equation like mainly right so when we rearrange our equations therefore we can get the error transfer functions or error signal over here would be given by this okay basically right so again it mainly depends on the the so-called input as well as the disturbance okay so yeah as uh as yeah simple as that lah, okay basically right so from this uh two terms itself okay from these two terms itself what we intend to do is that we would like to so-called control the disturbance okay so how we can see or control or yeah maybe to to before we control we we try to see the effect of this uh existence of existence of this uh disturbance okay so here we would like to evaluate the performance okay or the error due to the disturbance itself all right so if there is a disturbance therefore your equations may become a little bit complex okay but nevertheless it's still similar okay you have the the error uh steady state error okay which referring to the final value theorem okay due to the main input as well as due to the uh disturbance okay so we again this break them into two parts okay to simplify our calculations okay the first part would be error due to the the normal input and the error due to the disturbance okay so after we simplify all these things therefore you can see that we can now start to uh how to say we can start to evaluate okay the the steady state error due to each of this okay so just put into the equations okay if you know the g1 g2 okay g1 g2 okay as well as the type of the disturbance therefore you we can always predict the the type of error okay that contribute to the system okay when there is an input as well as there is a a disturbance okay so you can see that for the disturbance itself okay it's given by this particular input okay so this terms is referring to the to the steady state error due to disturbance as well as uh, this terms would be the steady state error due to the rs okay so now the main uh, additions to this particular uh this particular system okay would be the the ed okay so therefore we start to uh try okay what is the effect okay when the when the disturbance is in in the form of a step okay so therefore we assume a step input okay one over s put it in okay rec uh, and we would see that this would turns into something like this one over limit one over g2 okay plus limit g1 okay from this particular uh terms itself or error due to the disturbance itself it shows that the steady state error can be reduced okay because we 
our intention is to see and how to reduce this kind of error okay can be reduced okay this is one over this term right so therefore when g1 increase okay the this error can be reduced okay but for this terms because it's one one over one over therefore this term we desire it to be reduced okay g2 terms we intend to reduce it okay so you can see that meaning to say if we intend to minimize the effect of disturbance okay the error due to the disturbance when the disturbance is in the form of a step input therefore this transfer functions if possible we intend to reduce the dc gain the dc gain means the k value okay the k value remember uh this one okay this proportional value the k value we normally call as dc gain okay dc gain uh mainly due to the electrical terms itself direct current gain itself okay so dc gain over here okay we try to reduce this value okay k value for this transfer functions whereas for this gain we intend to increase it okay therefore when we have these combinations okay either one is okay but when we put two in 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 the work together then it will perform better lah, in reducing the effect of the disturbance okay towards producing the type of error okay for the first part okay that refers to this this is very similar to what you have uh, learned previously okay it's basically the same okay uh, you intend to re uh, in increase the gain for both okay so that the error will reduce okay but if you increase g2 then what happen if you in increase g2 it will improve this uh error meaning to say mini minimize this error but on the other hand okay when there is disturbance then it will not perform well okay therefore we may want to maybe maintain the k value over here okay but we try to increase the k value at the controller okay therefore this controller will play a role in in yeah tuning or make the system perform better okay when there is a disturbance okay to the system okay which is in the form of a step input right so this is how it may looks like okay so the arrangements okay rearrangement of the systems and so on okay so that uh we can like uh generate the the equations okay the the relationship between all these things okay so this may this is how we we can do it okay remember in chapter 2c previously okay there where we we have uh we have analyzed a system with disturbance where we may consider two parts okay when disturbance equals to zero and when input equals to zero okay so when input equals to zero then we can rearrange our system in in such a way right okay in, in such a way okay where the controller will become as our like the the feedback system okay so therefore here you can see that mm, if it is in the uh, feedback system therefore we would intend to increase the dc gain of the g1 okay and decrease the the dc gain for g2 okay so this this uh explain okay these conditions okay on what we have uh obtained mathematically right so that is how we can uh yeah how we can adjust the system itself okay so then therefore sometimes uh, we may also encounter a situation where the feedback system okay our feedback system consists of a certain value okay instead of the normal the the previous type okay that we always 
see, okay, the feedback system will consist of the the so called h equals to one. Okay, therefore they they do not write this block, right? Okay, but if it is not one, okay, then we call this as non unity. Okay, unit. Okay, unit is one. Okay, you therefore unity feedback means one unit lah for your feedback. Okay, but non non unity feedback means there is a certain value for that. Okay, so for this kind of feedback system, okay, uh, it's normally used. Okay. But uh, it depends on the situation of whether you want to improve the performance or maybe to, yeah, to, yeah, depends on the physical model as well. Okay, you sometimes you may rely on other other system where you may not able to to control. Okay, for example, so you may have a gear over here, then this connect to another system. Okay, to provide feedback, not not the direct not the the direct type of uh connections therefore there is a kind of transfer functions okay to be interpreted over here okay so therefore this feedback path can be a pure gain okay for example instead of one it can be a two three or whatever it is the uh, k value okay uh to yeah to to increase the the response of the of the system okay of the feedback system itself okay so what we would see here is that uh we intend to put a hs over here okay to represent a non non unity values at this uh block okay therefore the errors now is not the difference between the input and output anymore okay is you have to multiply by the by the by the gain of this uh, feedback uh, block okay so in this case we call the signal at the output okay signal at the output of the jamming uh summing junctions okay this one is not the it's not error signal anymore we call it as a actuating signal okay because we have added uh some some values okay we have multiplied some or amplify it okay that particular feedback signal okay before we minus it okay we call that as actuating signal ea okay so from that we we derive our steady state error okay we derive it okay therefore what we can do is uh, we try to put in two additional block okay to remove to to yes yeah, so called remove the the just like mathematics lah okay so if you want to add one to one side you have to minus it that that one on the same side again right so you just minus one and add one over here okay so therefore from this you can bring this minus one okay into here Okay, to become H minus one. Okay, and this one become the normal one, lah, right? Okay, then again, this loop is the normal feedback loop, right? So, normal feedback loop, you can have a function of G divided by one since it's minus. So, G my over one plus G and multiply by this whole term okay so multiply by this whole term meaning to say you have g h minus g okay so eventually when we have a uh, combine and re rearrange this particular blocks okay into this therefore this is the same or similar type of uh, transfer functions that you you have seen previously right okay you just analyze according to this okay it's it's just a rearrangement of block diagram so that we can uh analyze as usual okay so this is how it it may looks like lah. okay so as you can see 
if we are presented by something like this okay with a non-unity feedback system what we need to do is we rearrange with this okay we can convert that system to this system okay therefore you can try this on your own okay this is uh, another examples from the textbook okay by professor nis okay so rearrange this to to the system that we have like this okay so from there you can start to analyze accordingly all right so in this examples uh what they need is to find the system time okay then a prop uh, error constants and so on right okay so what we need is this we will discuss in the next uh, lecture okay on the stability right so keep in mind we assume it is stable now okay and we start to analyze right so what we can do is we have the g and h okay combine into this particular system okay g over one plus g h minus g okay therefore we have g one over one plus g h minus g okay combine them okay once you put in all this it looks com complicated at the beginning but once you put in all this value and do the mathematical plus and minus of all these things therefore you get this value okay and once you get this value therefore again you can check whether you can uh, fact factor out the s or not okay if it is not then therefore it is type zero system okay then from there onwards okay it's now become obvious like right it's okay so you just analyze according to the normal practice that you you used to to do okay in uh yeah previously okay when there is no disturbance okay come into picture or when there is no this so-called uh, non-unity system come into picture okay so just analyze accordingly okay you can find the kp uh, and, and the steady state error okay you just need to do some practice over here okay so we may end this sessions okay with this so-called sensitivity okay so this sensitivity refers to uh to the idea okay of if we change the parameter okay how it will respond okay how sensitive it is to respond okay just like when you say someone is very sensitive okay meaning to say his senses is very high on certain parameters right or certain certain point okay for example you may say uh uh i may i may say certain terms okay then some some of you may feel that i'm i'm uh i'm referring to that person and so on okay so everyone have different sense in in their mind okay even the skins have different senses okay so this sensitivity will detect certain parameters okay they may react faster okay to it so this is so-called sensitivity right so sensitivity can be refers to the degree to which the changes of the parameter will affect the the transfer functions okay and therefore the performance okay how sensitive it is okay therefore it's referred to the ratio okay of the fraction changes okay how fast okay per certain values of it okay so normally we may we may take in this form okay we put a limit on on the fraction itself okay so fractions change in the functions to the fraction change in the parameter okay in the functions and in the parameter okay as the as the fractional change overall okay when the 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 parameter approach zero then what would happen to the to the function itself okay so this is how it may looks like okay and when we we rearrange again okay, fraction changes means uh delta f over f okay fraction changes in p means delta p over p the parameter itself okay so when p approaching zero then we can relate okay in this particular form
Okay, again, looks simple, looks complicated. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, but then uh, when you come to the application point, okay, where you have all the values, okay, comes into picture. Okay, so take this example. So, okay, if you have a functions, okay, given by k over k plus a, okay, therefore you may not know uh what would occur, right? So what we intend to see the sensitivity over here would be we try with different value. Okay, so let's put fk equals to 10 and k equals to 1. Hey, sorry, 100. Okay, so therefore we may get the f value equals to 0 0.091. Okay, when we change the a value to 300, then the value change to 0 0.032. Okay, meaning to say there is a reduction of 65 percent okay when we increase this a value uh to 300 okay means 200 percent changes okay so you can see that the a you increase 200 percent changes this one only decrease like 65 percent okay so this is how we so-called uh measure the the sensitivity and we realize that this one further increase, this one further decrease. Okay, therefore they have like a reduced sensitivity. Okay, in the in reducing type of sensitivity. Okay, not increasing type of sensitivity. Okay, so this is how we can uh, measure it. Lah, okay, the sensitivity depending on the certain parameters. Okay, so same things you may want to analyze uh, the sensitivity for for this particular systems. Okay, where how the error will you like react okay so if we intend to find out what is the error so therefore this error will be become our functions okay our f okay and the parameter here that we intend to measure okay it can be a and there is also we try to analyze in terms of k right so you just use the equations okay rearrange then you may get in this particular form okay so what it means from this particular uh, equations if you cannot make it then you do the similar things okay fix a k value change another value and see how it will respond okay so if you can visualize it okay directly from here then you may get something like this okay the sensitivity change of the parameter k okay and a itself okay is less than one okay for a positive a and b okay so you have to try with different uh, constant okay to change it okay to see how it would respond according to to the yeah the error will respond to the to the changes okay so in this chapter you have seen that uh any system okay when there is a uh, different type of input being inserted to the system it will produce maybe zero error or they may also produce infinite type of error okay as time increase okay so from these chapters you know that there is a error constant itself okay static error constant where you it give you some ideas okay on how uh, or what type of input should be proper so-called proper okay and then from there onwards we also learn about how to like uh, adjust the the dc gain the k according to the to the desired error okay not not necessarily desired error maybe design error okay so that you would not uh, exceed that kind of error right adjusting to find the k value and then from there onwards we also analyze uh, on when there is a disturbance coming in, when there is a, a non-unity type of feedback, okay, how we can treat it. And finally, we come to like analyze the sensitivity, okay, how sensitive it is, okay, to produce that kind of error, how fast it responds, okay, when we change a certain parameter more than what we, we put in. Okay, so this gives you the overall picture on one of the of the basic uh 
basic specifications probably okay of a system all right so any questions for this okay we would end this any questions in the slides that i've provided i guess i have uh more more examples after this slide okay you may see other examples okay which have been uh again captured from the textbook okay so you just have to go through it okay so that it gives you some ideas of uh like uh, how the questions or what can yeah can can you like what what can you extract further okay on this kind of knowledge okay of uh steady state error okay so any questions from all of you let me check so far okay all right so if no questions then we will end this sessions and we will resume again tomorrow uh afternoon 2 p.m okay with a new chapter on the stability right so remember uh this chapter we always say that we assume the system is stable okay so what is stable so tomorrow we will try to evaluate what is stability okay whether the system is stable or not all right so if no then we will call this sessions to an end all right uh yes uh later i will put in the attendance link okay actually the attendance link also already in the google classroom right but never mind i will put it in in the whatsapp later all right so stay safe everyone and thank you thank you doctor thank you doctor Yay. thank you doctor